This is the first impression video of the recently aired Chinese drama Go Ahead, 以家人之名 Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. As you can tell from the thumbnail of this video, it is a little bit different from my usual final review or first impression video. It is because I really wouldn't want to call this a rant video, but I have a lot of problems with this drama. This is a 40 episode drama that is being aired on Mango TV online and also on Hunan Television satellite TV station in China. This drama is led by Tan Songyun, Zhang Xincheng, Song Weilong as the younger core cast, and then you have Tu Songyan and Zhang Xiling, two brilliant actors acting as the father's generation. And it is focused on this unusual family that's made up with these five people. And the Chinese title actually means "In the Name of the Family." 以家人之名 Whereas the English title "Go Ahead" is very confusing. I have no idea what is the relationship between the Chinese and the English title, but that's how they translated it. I think many of my audience already know the basic setup of the characters in this drama. You have two families that are essentially neighbors, both. Losing the mother figure in that family due to different reasons, so they decided to come together and、um, live together. And then in the process, they also adopted another boy, who is also unrelated to them into their family. So it creates this weird stitched-up family with two fathers, two brothers, a sister that has a lot of heartwarming moments going on. At least in the first ten episodes.、Mm, let me first. Tell you my rating based on my seven level scale. I will put it at gold mine slash land mine because I think for certain people this drama will still be very appealing. There will be things you love, and I also love about this drama. But then the land mine part is referring to a lot of problems that I literally cannot sit still and just ignore. This first impression is based on the first twenty episodes of the drama, and I have decided not to continue watching this drama beyond this point. Whatever they do with the later episodes, because I'm just not happy. With what they have given me, especially from ten episodes onwards to this point, I don't want to waste my time anymore. First, let me talk about the good things I appreciate. Mainly two points: the earlier episodes of this drama are very sweet. When the children were still young, their kids, how they met each other, how their family ended up being together. There's a lot of very sweet, heartwarming, tear-jerking family type of. Moments. That's like the highlights of this drama, and leading up to the point where the three kids are in high school, and the couple of episodes about their life in high school are also very, very lovely. You really do feel this is such a lovely family. These people are just precious. The second thing I appreciate about this drama is these actors are so good. For the main five core cast members, I would say only Song Weilong is a little bit、um, on a different level <laughs> compared to the other four. But I will give him a pass because he's the only one who really never received any academic acting training, and he lacks some very strong foundations that the other actors have all built up through their years of training and experience. He's really young; he's the youngest. Whereas Tan Songyun, Zhang Xincheng, and Tu Songyan, Zhang Xiling, they are. Much, much more experienced. The two younger actors are kind of at the top of their generation of actors, and then the older actors are just brilliant. Tu Songyan, especially, he's very well known in the Chinese drama film industry as a super solid actor. Somebody that you would just not worry about if he could pull off a character, you give him. The actors, actress, so good to the point where some of the plot is really unreasonable. It is out there. It is. Stretching reality too much, but because of their acting, their ability to convincingly portray the characters' emotions, how genuine that interaction, that love you feel about this family, it kind of cancels out the stuff that actually wouldn't stand scrutinizing. And had it been lesser actors playing those roles, would have failed. But because of how strong the cast is, they really help the story to stay floating and creating that level of acceptability for the audience. So these are the main two things I like about this drama. Now let's talk about the sides that really makes me, frankly speaking, quite angry. But before I go at it. Please remember personal opinion. You're welcome to stay and listen to my version or leave. Okay, just be civil and kind. There are two main things that I just can't sit comfortably with after watching the first twenty episodes. One is to do with the plot, the logic, and how convincingly they sell the setups and the story to me. The other 
is to do with how they portray women. Okay, so first let's talk about the ever more 狗血 plot, dog blood plot. Which literally means it's just creating conflicts for conflict's sake, and it's so written for the purpose of eyeball grabbing. It disregards reality. It disregards possibility because all the things that happen in this drama are relatively small possibility things, and one is piled up on the other, on the other, on the other. So mathematically, you multiply them all together. It feels like the things that they've described in this drama for those characters literally requires a meteor coming out of nowhere in the universe, just hitting this family specifically, literally only their flat. Everybody else is is perfect in that building. It just comes in for them. That is such lazy writing. It just happens. This family loses the. Wife, because of this reason, and then meets another family loses the wife、uh, for another reason, and then another woman comes in somehow,、um, just ditch the kid there, and then they come together, and then for some reason, almost at the same time when they grow up to the point where they graduate from the high school for the two boys, they immediately got pulled away because. Things just happen together for them. One is because the biological mother just suddenly got into this incredibly impossible to happen two accidents piled on each other,、uh, and the, the other, the dad who's never showed up, just showed up on the day and then grabbed him away, and、um, it just happens. And then they both disappear for nine years, and they both come back at the same time, and they both try to get back to the sister's life, and they both try to pursue her romantically. <gasps> Drama needs coincidence, yes, but like not at this level. It is overkill. It immediately just discredit everything. I just do not believe in the story anymore, and I also do not buy into the thing that two brothers who grew up with this kid—they were literally like what five, six, eight years old when they met—and they've spent their entire childhood and adolescence together as brothers and sisters. They've seen each other at the most embarrassing moments. They've played mud together. They've fight fights together. With that kind of memory of your childhood growing up together, how does it work that both boys? Later, when they become adults, decided to look at a girl in a very romantic way and try to pursue her. I mean, if one of them is that like that, okay, but two at the same time. Again, exceptional multiplied by exceptional. I don't care if later, you know, it's gonna be an explanation that particularly Zhang Xincheng's character really is not romantically attracted to Li Jianjian. He is really doing it because he wants to pay back the debt. The father of Li Jianjian literally raising him. Up when he has no need to do that. I mean, probably that's what they're gonna go for the plot. But at this point, the way that they're telling the story is just too much, and it's creepy. It's really, really creepy. Especially Song Weilong's character, the way he smiles at Li Jianjian, the way he tries to kiss her when she's asleep and grabbing her hand. I'm like, no, stop it. it doesn't not matter what your previous history is. It's just. Creepy, and the only reason that people are still watching it and not really get super offended, can we be honest? It's because Song Weilong is good looking, like really, really good looking. Also, tagging on that is currently it has so many romantic relationships that is also exceptional multiplied by exceptional, such as this roommate loves this guy, but this guy loves this girl, and this girl loves this guy, and this guy loves that girl, and that girl lo- likes this guy. And I'm like, what the heck? You're doing a loop relationship. Maybe you should just make Li Jianjian's boyfriend fall in love with Tang Tan. Then you can complete a circle. You know, it's just internally circulating forever, and you can keep Zichou's character on the side because he's just always on the side anyway. Then let's talk about the second thing that really put me off about this drama. That's even stronger than the first point, which is I feel that writers are just misogynists. And I don't understand why, because they wrote "Find Yourself" earlier this year. Same people. It gave me a lot of happiness at the beginning of this year, which was a really terrible time. Not like now it's getting better, but anyway, what happened to this drama? They literally put all the despicable actions, behaviors, languages, exclusively to female roles, especially married or having children, older women, the mothers, the grandmothers. Like they're all B I T C H. Lin Xiao's mother is just a psycho. Okay, by this point, if you're looking at episode twenty-one, two, 
<laughs> Zi Qiu's mom probably has some story later in the drama, I'm guessing. But what she did, totally ditching her son, is also just plainly wrong. You have all those aunties in the neighborhoods who just couldn't keep their freaking mouth shut and saying horrible things to children and gossiping about other people. You have Zi Qiu's aunt who is probably kind-hearted but constantly putting the kid down. His maternal grandmother is also... <sighs> Lin Xiao's maternal grandmother is wah. And Mingyue Li Jianjian's good friend's mother is just another control freak. Why are you just making all those women terrible? It's almost like you can only be lovable and sweet if you're young as a woman like Li Jianjian, like Mingyue Li, like Tang Chan. If you are virgins, like with quotation mark, literally means you're not married, you're not yet a man's property or mother. Unless you're that, then you're like, you, you, you are the center of the narrative, you're meant to be sympathized with by the audience. And if you get older, and if you move on to the older generation, congratulations, you have a task to be a bitch. The only men who are terrible uh, are first, a very tiny character, that is Chen Ting's brother, who literally showed up for like how many scenes in one episode and disappeared. Then it is the biological father of Zhang Xincheng's character, Zhao Huaguang. But I can very logically explain that the only reason he is written as a bad man is because plot needs him to be. Like, the mother is already MIA, and the only thing that can pull Zi Qiu away after he graduates from high school, because he wouldn't want to go himself, is having his father coming into the picture and forcing him to leave that family. Yeah, mother is used, so there's only father left, and father happens to be male. So, that's why. But apart from these two men, like, who are the bad guys in this drama? The two dads are saints. They're like Jesus Christ, gleaming with like the holy light of being a saint. When you think honestly, especially for Liu Xiao's family, the parents, right, had this tragic event happening to them when their little daughter died because they were negligent. Even though in a very traditional Chinese family, it is true that the woman is <laughs> entrusted with the task of taking care of the children much more than the guy. But it doesn't mean he should be just like free of blame. He works all the time. He does not show up. He's the missing part of the family, which is very common in China. So when the kid dies, he's just as responsible. But yet you see how the narrative mostly just put all the blame on the psycho woman. She is really the crazy wife of Rochester in Jane Eyre, right? <laughs> who would burn down the house and who got locked in the attic forever. And I just start to feel very if you ever did women's study and literature. What the heck is going on with this writing? In that family, the father and the mother are equally responsible for the tragedy. Yet, you see how the story spins? The angle? The policeman fatherling is pretty much still a perfect saint. I'm not saying this type of thing does not happen in a family where literally a lot of women are really terrible. Okay, there are families like that. But this is a drama. The writer can decide whether they want to make all the women terrible or not, or all the men terrible or not, or give us more complicated three-dimensional people where everyone is flawed in the way, but then they're also good in other way, and you balance it out, and you give a relatively, let's say, fair picture to both genders. This is a planet with seven freaking billion people. Half of that are women. Somehow, in their made-up world, in the story of Go Ahead, Ijar and Jimmy, the women are just so terrible. <laughs> and the guys are just good. And I'm like, fine. I know you probably write a lot of super conflict-heavy moments, dramatic moments, to get attention, to get on trending on Weibo, to get people into it, to talk about it. You need the heat. You need the promotional value of your drama. I see that. But this is so overdone. And it's so intentional. And maybe it's not. Maybe it's actually not intentional. Maybe it's just subconsciously for those writers that women, in their opinion, who are over the age of 40 or 50 who have children, are just all like that. <laughs> okay. Guess your life is really sad. You've seen a lot of people like that in your life. You probably suffered at their hands. After the two boys left for universities, this story literally just got ever more dog blood dear. And the craziness of the women just keeps going up to next level. I am not gonna continue watching this drama because I know it will just anger me. It will just piss me off. And I'm like, not gonna intentionally look for trouble for myself. I feel sad for the leading actors, actress. I think they're brilliant. 
I appreciate their hard work, their talent. It will not change my opinion about how much I love them. But for this drama, goodbye. I know this is more extreme than my usual review video, but I really, really have big problems. And I'm being honest. If my opinions are totally different from yours, please don't feel offended. If you want to discuss that, please be civil and kind and that's fine. And don't let me influence you in terms of if you really love the drama to this point, you want to continue watching it because of whatever reason, just keep doing it. Your happiness, like I always say, is more important, okay? That concludes um, New Exes, a uh, kind of first impression and ranting video on <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you for watching Avenue XL. See you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.